and amiable welcome to everyone this is your allied lectum channel to enhance your understanding before going into today's topic if you had missed the previous topic phlebotomy you can check with the link below in description okay today's topic is about biomedical waste management and biohazards biomedical a term which is related to both biology and medicines waste a routinely used term in our day to day life and it is a substance of products that is discarded as it is no longer useful what is biomedical waste it is generated during the diagnosis of nature of illness during testing of diseases using patient samples like blood urine sputum etc and also during treatment research or production of biological products for human or animals so this is the statement given by world health organization for biomedical waste sources of biomedical waste there are three main sources which includes sanitation workers as they collect solid and liquid waste they have more chances to spread infections medical and paramedical staffs they too have more chances to spread infections as they are health workers and they provide clinical services to patients finally patients patients too have many chances to spread infections and it is very important to discard the waste properly and so we can decrease the level of infection classification of biomedical waste first infectious waste it is suspected to pathogens involving bacteria virus and fungi which causes disease in susceptible and immunocompromised host pathological waste it is related to pathology and consists of human tissues organs body parts blood and other body fluids It is very important to discard the pathological waste as much as possible in a proper manner. Pharmaceutical waste. It is related to medicines which includes expired and unused drugs and vaccines. Chemical waste. It consists of solid, liquid and gaseous chemicals and these are dangerous to patients so it should be discarded properly. radioactive waste it includes x-rays and other radioactive substances need for biomedical waste management to prevent the nosocomial infection that is hospital acquired infection to minimize the risk of air water and soil pollution and to reduce the risk of infections for those who are handling waste and to other normal individuals segregation of biomedical waste in color coded bags there are five color coded bags which are routinely used that are yellow red blue black and white yellow color bin is used for discarding human anatomical waste which includes body parts and also bandages cotton etc red color this includes solid waste such as disposable items other than waste shafts like tubing catheters iv sets etc blue color bin it includes gloves syringes and plastic waste and that are sometimes recycled and made into reusable black color this bin is used mainly for discarding cytotoxic drugs and chemical waste which cannot be recycled white color this includes waste shards which may cause puncture and cuts and it includes needles syringes scalpels glass etc it is very important to transport the discarded item safely and to plan the treatment of waste like whether it should be reusable or non reusable it is achieved by several methods like incineration 
डीप बरियल डिस और स्टेरिलाइजेशन बाय ड्राई हीट वी मूव ऑन टू द टॉपिक बायोहेजार्ड बायोहेजार्ड और ऑर्गेनिक सब्सटेंसेस और माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स दैट कॉज हार्म टू द नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल्स एंड अदर लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेबोरेटरीज और एट हाइयर रिस्क ऑफ एक्सपोजर टू बायोहेजार्ड बायोहेजार्ड वेस्ट इंक्लूड इंफेक्शियस एजेंट्स to human plants animals biological toxins materials derived from humans and primates that are monkeys apes and other mammals human and primate cell lines recombinant materials such as plasmids dna or rna levels of biohazards the united states cdc that is Centers for Disease Control and Prevention categorizes various diseases in different levels of biohazard that ranges from level 1 being minimum risk to level 4 being extreme risk. Biohazard level 1 Bacteria and viruses including Bacillus subtilis, E. coli, varicella zoster or chicken pox as well as some cell cultures and non infectious bacteria comes under this level 1 at this level only minimal precautions are required against the biohazardous materials and most likely involving gloves and some sort of facial protection equipments like goggles face mask etc biohazard level 2 bacteria and viruses that cause only mild disease to humans and also it is very difficult to contact through aerosols in a lab setting this involves hepatitis a b c some influenza a strains salmonella mumps measles and dengue fever biohazard level 3 bacteria and viruses that can cause severe to fatal disease in humans but for which vaccines or other treatment methods are available so this includes anthrax western nile virus corona virus tuberculosis yellow fever and malaria some parasites also comes under this level which includes plasmodium falciparum causing malaria and trypanosoma cruzi causing trypanosomiasis biohazard level 4 viruses and bacteria that cause severe to fatal disease in humans and for which vaccines or other treatment methods will not be available and this includes ebola virus argentine hemorrhagic fevers and other hemorrhagic diseases environmental safety procedures the environmental health and safety center has implemented a comprehensive program for managing the hazardous material then microbiological laboratories which involves processing of microorganisms and also some general laboratories should follow some special safety measures it includes risk warning signs separate areas protective clothing safety cabinet decontamination levels of containment risk pathogens must be handled with great care in order to avoid spread of infections warning signs these signs should be displayed in workstations with the statement danger infectious material separate areas separate areas should be set aside for each and every procedures in laboratory then safety cabinets and it includes laminar flow and biosafety cabinets decontamination includes sterilization disinfectants and proper waste disposal levels of containment ranges from the lowest biosafety level 1 to the highest biosafety level 4 we conclude this topic 
so the collection transport and disposal of biomedical waste which involves the supervision of such operations with care of disposal sites and treatment is called biomedical waste management there are three main sources which includes sanitation workers medical staffs and patients the biomedical waste should be segregated in different color coded bags and it should be classified as infectious pharmaceutical chemical or radioactive then biohazard it is an harmful threat that affects human and other living organisms by organic substances and it is categorized from level 1 to level 4 based on their severity thank you